I like touching stuff. Touching Welcome to stuff. another uh, <laughs> podcast. Is that how we start these? I totally forgot how we start these. Welcome to a podcast. You take us in, Charlie. Uh, hey guys, welcome to another podcast here at Happy Rabbit Studios. We're doing it. Another podcast. <laughs> Are we Happy Rabbit Studios now? Production studios, entertainment. We bring the visual. You need it, we'll provide it. Anything. <laughs> uh, so today we were just talking a little earlier and we're like, why aren't we doing a podcast about this? Let's all jump over here and just start recording. Because we were talking about how we all met. And just like networking and getting together in the industry, which we think is really important. And we kind of want to just talk about how we all kind of jumped in. Um, Which we kind of touched on a little bit last time, but we can go a little bit more in depth. We did, yeah. It's kind of more, we want to talk more about like networking and, and what that means in the film industry. Because a lot of what we do is so heavily based upon networking and building those relationships with other people. Yeah, long term. Um, and... I thought it'd be interesting to talk about that. Yeah. Especially, you know, like getting going and where we are in our podcast lineup right now, I think it's a super important skill to have. And we got a new couch. We're sitting on we something pretty couch. comfy. Um, table. And so, yeah. Table. Some new stuff has been going down. We're trying to <laughs> make this look a lot better and clean it up for you guys as well as make it comfier for ourselves. So, hope you enjoy the new setup. Charles may be taking a nap. If this turns into a bed and someone's sleeping mm-hmm. mid-podcast, don't be mad. <laughs> um, it's very slidey, though. But, like, with networking, <laughs> what's your... I mean, there's so many avenues to start off with, but what would be your biggest advice to somebody when it comes to networking? Uh, do it. And what? Well, but what do you mean by do it? Is that... <laughs> Is that when somebody says, like, hey, do you want to go out to a red carpet event? Or, hey, do you want to come over, like, for dinner? What is that? What do you mean, do it? Yeah, so I am really good, like, not really good. I am not a social person, let's be honest. You're pretty quiet. I'm pretty quiet. I'm pretty, like, I keep to myself. Um, I don't do, like, parties, really. I'm not a partier. Like, I'll come hang. and You'll come around. If you want to go rock climbing or play video games, I'm down. But as far as like parties, which is honestly that's it's, a huge part of like the film, is I feel like yeah, yeah, getting out of the and... get going to events. Um, which I mean, my wife is really good about that stuff, but I'm just not. I was about to say you, you're definitely like more like you know I'd rather stay home, and she's more like I want to be out there and yeah. meet the people. So. Yeah. You guys definitely have a perfect little right. ebb and, and flow. And she definitely forces me out of my comfort zone to go do that stuff. That's good. You need <laughs> Which... that a little bit. Nothing's wrong Nothing wrong with that. That's, yeah. That's um, what makes you guys perfect. But, yeah, you know, but when I say do it, um, it's more of having an approachable personality and, and a likable personality. Mm-hmm. So that way when you're working, people actually want to talk to you yeah. and be friends with you. And, and therefore, you know, you'll get hired onto more shows because people like working with you in that sense. Obviously there's more that goes into play, like being a hard worker and knowing your stuff and blah, 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 you know, but if you're a nice person that people want to be around you, then that's obviously going to help. And I think that goes really far along the lines of like, just knowing your team and, Knowing that if like you and I were out at an event and I had to walk away and I introduced you to someone, you could hold your own and you could talk to them and you could represent like the project we we're working on really well. And like having those skill sets, I think go really far because whether we're pitching a project at a dinner, a red carpet event, like or just talking to someone before set, that can lead into so many more jobs and opportunities. I mean, I feel like everything I've done in film has been from either talking to someone on set about a different project, going to dinner with them and like just talking about it. Right. And so, uh, for example, the very first thing that I worked on, um, like actually worked on, uh, I was still a student and it was a movie called white on rice. Um, I don't know if that's PC. I don't know if that would, that movie would work so well today. (laughs) <laughs> anyways so, it's so funny as far as <laughs> not to interrupt you but that era of movies and what they got away with versus how you could not do any of that now is quite... Dude, for movie night i kind of want to do like a pc <laughs> we should do <laughs> like 
uh, like a, I don't know, like 90s and prior movie night where yeah. it's like all of those <laughs> movies. Tropic Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking love that movie. Anyways, uh, so I was on White on Rice and I reached out to the key grip. And be, so they reached out to U, to to Utah Valley University and they needed students to come work because they were a low budget movie. Um, and I was sent over there. We've talked about this in, in some of our other um, shows. But I um, really felt like I needed to, to hit up their key grip and be like, yo, if you need homies, like, let me know. And he, like, laughed and he was joking and was like, I'm not the guy to talk to you about that. Because they were low budge and he wasn't in charge. I mean, as far as hiring people and making those decisions. Um, and I was like, kind of felt like a dumbass because I was like, put myself out there and it didn't work. And I was like, well, at least I tried and I went home, whatever, you know? And then I feel like it was like nine or 10 o'clock at night. I might get a phone call from a number that I don't recognize. And sure enough, like here's the key grip saying, Hey, you want to work tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> and so that. it's like, you know, sometimes you just have to put yourself out there and make that move and ask or try to make that connection. And there's nothing wrong with feeling like an idiot because at the end of the day, you don't get the job and you're right where you were right there before you made the phone call exactly. or walked up to them or whatever that was. What, like what would I have lost yeah. if he never called me? Like whoop de doo You know what I mean? And I could – I there's so many situations off the top of my head of like putting myself out there like that where I never got a call back or whatever that looks like. And I think that's important too because you learn – you learn either why that didn't work and you may meet that person later on and you realize like, oh, I wasn't ready at that time. Right. Or, um, you know, you just learn so much to where then when you talk to more people in the future, you're more confident going into that conversation. Like you can hold your own. And that comes with getting hired too. I think if you're that, you know, that person that's approaching someone kind of like, you know, I'd, I'd love to work for you versus like, yo, let me, let me get out here. Like, what can I do? That energy comes across so much and people like people come around that like if you're that person you will find that people want to be around that so. yeah no totally yeah you got to understand a lot of that stuff's going to happen super early on in your career like you're not going to make the best impression on every single person or a rememberable impression on every single person you work with like i've had plenty of jobs that i thought i'd get calls back for that i end up not getting a call back for and it's just one of those things you just got to keep pushing through yeah and and to that point making an impression i think that's so important especially like if you're a PA on set, if you're a second AC on set, like I'll say it 10 times over, you're just as important as the DP and director. Like you're a team and everyone works together. It would not happen if you were not on set. So like, don't be afraid to like talk to people, have conversations during lunch, like learn and create those relationships. Like don't be the PA in the corner, like afraid to talk to anyone because then people won't know what you're capable of outside of just being on set that day. Yeah. I feel so. I'm gonna have Alex kind of explain because he reached out to Scooter. Yeah. Um, and go, go ahead, explain explain to us how you networked. So I kind of learned this pr kind of idea prior to meeting Scooter. Uh, my previous job was the same thing. I wanted to do something that I had a passion for. So I found who I thought was the best at it locally to me, and I reached out to him. What was that first thing? What were you the doing? First the first thing, time? so I did custom paint and design for Stripe Colt Paint. Um, still in business. You can check her out. She's awesome. Um, and I did that for about three years. And there's no way you get into that industry without being taught by someone who's a professional, who's learned those secrets through years and years and years of practice. So it's kind of a niche market just like this. Unless you reach out to a ton of people, I got turned down by like 20 other different painters throughout Utah that were like, oh, I, I don't give a shit about you. Like, screw this kid. Like, I don't want to teach you airbrushing. I don't want to sit down and talk to you. I don't want to do this stuff. And then messaged her and it was like, I got ignored just like kind of when I messaged you the first time, yeah. just got ignored and got ignored. And I'm like, I'm like, you're not getting away from me this time. <laughs> so I messaged her a couple more times and eventually she posted like, like, I think I'm going to be looking for an apprentice soon. And I'm like, that's when she's going to reply to me. So I sent her just a big message of, look, I'm painting bikes already in my garage. You can take me on. 
as your apprentice or I promise I'm going to be up in your business in a year and I'm going to be taking your business. So you can teach me or I'm going to be your enemy. You know what I mean? So yeah. she took me on and that was like a three and a half on and off sort of years of, of paint design. And so from that knowledge, I once I quit that, I was like, film is what I want to do. It's always been what I wanted to do in some form of another. So I was like, who do I know? And so I literally got on my Instagram and I was like, film. I searched just film and like a couple like friends popped up and then from there it gave me some suggested people to go and follow and then I found Scooter and I'm like, oh, I'm already following this guy. And so I'm like digging through his page and how stuff. Did, how did we meet before that? Oh my gosh. Um, motorcycle parts. Yeah, you came over yeah. to the house. It was like years before that and you bought some like Harley pegs or something for one of your bikes yeah. no way i didn't know yeah, that. yeah. he just had oh, a, that's cool yeah, my background's harleys and i race harleys and whatnot and have a few bikes and so you came over and we're picking out some parts for one of your builds straight little did i know years later when we met and i had you come on set and full circle you were like dude i've met you before and i'm like where this kid looks so <laughs> familiar i'm like where have i seen this kid and it was that day you came over and bought some parts. Yeah, in the back of my mind, the first time I met you, I was like, why the, f why are you so distant? Like, I've talked to you. You know I like bikes. Like, we're homies already. Like, <laughs> You're like, what is going on? Like, wake up, bro, you know? And then once it clicked, he was literally like, oh, like, I saw, oh, what's up, dude? And he, like, yeah. came and gave, like, re high fived me and, like, a whole different form of greeting and i'm like yeah, bro. it's hard though and i'm not creating excuses but like the set life you're meeting so many people and being a freelance person on set like when i say you're meeting so many people sometimes in a week you'll be meeting a few hundred different people if you're going to a few different sets so oh like, it's insane dude it's... like the amount of people that we like in contact with when we're working is nuts and I'm shaking their hand. I want to meet their name. I want to know about them. I want to, like, treat them with respect while we're working. But then I get onto the next set, and it's almost like this weird, like, okay, that job's done. And you, like, burn that file and, like, go to the next job. Yeah, 100%. Um, so anytime, and I have that a lot that happens, um, but, like, my apologies. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, happens, but bro. thank you for being consistent and, like, getting after it and, like, doing the damn thing because – I think that's so important. Like, there's so many people that, like, take that as, like, disrespectful. Yeah, or they'll no. get mad at that and, like, take that in a negative way. And it's, like, there's no harm on my end or, like, anything like that. Like, it's just we were on jobs. We were on a movie. We have live shit come up. Yeah. And it didn't work out. We didn't have the studio yet. Like, things weren't proper. But you kept consistent. And when it lined up for us, it lined up for you, and it worked perfectly. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest bits of advice I have for someone that is trying to get into something that they love is you have to keep your schedule relatively free, which is weird to say because you have to make money to survive. But if that opportunity comes up and you have to go to work and you miss that opportunity and you don't get another phone call, you're going to be way more upset at yourself because you went and worked your corporate nine to five other than taking the chance to do what you, your dream is, you know? Yeah. So open up that time for yourself. If the opportunity comes, I'm sick today. Sorry. And oh, you're good. Go and do that job. You know what I mean? Go and take that opportunity when it comes up. Don't no, Don't give yourself excuses for, to do these things. Just do them, you know? Yeah. And if I had stayed a full schedule, I wouldn't have been able to go and meet you guys, you know? And I wouldn't be here. And when you get these chances... Take them, show up at like eight o'clock in the morning and be there until nine o'clock at night. And if it's your dream job, it's one of those things that you're going to put your passion into. So I think that's the biggest part about it is finding that passion and finding something you want to fully commit into. And then you're, you're not going to take no for an answer. I'll <clears throat> message you 15 times before you answer me, dude. But yeah, and people, I'm going to get the job. That yeah. energy, like people gravitate towards whether yeah you're out at a dinner or like anything. Like if you're coming through with like, hey, I have this film and we're going to shoot this film. Like people like ears will perk up and they want to know like how can they get involved in that project and like people love that like energy, especially in the film industry because so much of this is self-driven and self-motivated that like to get projects over the goal line, like it's a lot of like just personal effort. And so it's really cool when you can collaborate with that and build that and then get people to also like be attracted to that. Yeah, so you're persistent, 
And then you also reached out on social media to, mm-hmm. for Scooter, right? Yep, um, absolutely. And sometimes yeah. you, as reaching out through social media, you, like you said, you didn't answer the first few times. If you're reaching out to some of these people who do film and do some of these larger things, it's 50-50 they even run their own social media. Yeah. So just keep reaching out, keep reaching out, keep reaching out. What if one day the assistant goes up to the person who, you know, you're trying to talk to and is like, yo, this person has messaged us 50 times. Can we bring him on for a day? You know, and then that 50th time is you're in. Yeah, dude. And like the crazy thing is when it gets busy in town and like we always need people and oftentimes it's always like who's at the front uh, in the brain, you know, like mm-hmm. who's at the top of the list in the brain and it's like. Yeah, there's a, all these people, but there's the top of the list of the people that either you were just working with and whoever, you know, you saw most recently or talked to most recently. And so, like, staying up on those connections is also a big part of which I am horrible at mm, I was going to say, usually at the start of every single year after Christmas in January, I go through and text, like, eight different people on my phone. It's, like, four or five first ACs and, like, three DPs. Yeah. And I was talking to some. I won't name names, but I was, like, talking to someone, a couple guys that we know that just worked a job. And I asked him, I was like, how did you get that job from that producer? Like, are you, are you her first call right now? Or like, what's going on? And he was like, no, I like text her after the holidays and was like, Hey, it was good to see you at the end of the year last year. Just let, it was like good working with you again. Let me know if you need some help. And so of course, two weeks later, when they ended up getting a surprise call that they needed to bring some crew members out of Utah, guess who she called? And I was like, shit, cause I didn't <laughs> do that this year. I completely cause with like us moving and we were building all this stuff down here. Like yeah. I completely spaced doing that this year. And he did that. And I was like, you yeah. Like no, I completely <laughs> spaced doing it. It's smart. really smart. And like to that point, I think, um, building friendships outside of just pure work, uh, like a big thing we do here is we have like a lot of golf games we go do. Um, so we'll like invite everyone, like people on sets, we'll set up little like golf tournaments in between. We do like scrambles like, in between movies and then like it's never just people, crew members from that show. It's always you like... You always get some friends. I'll always see all the other in. homies that are like on another show and they're free on Saturday. So they just come and sign up and come do it with us. Like Yeah. yeah. And uh, we will always like any event or any other project like Chris Copier, shout out to Chris. Uh, but anything I've ever done like in the music world or throwing concerts, like Chris is the first one there like dancing on stage, having fun with everyone. And it's crazy, like, how you can build that, and then next thing you know, you're, like, talking there, and like, hey, I have a project next month, like, yeah, you, you got to stay persistent. And, like, it's just, like, people want to work with their friends, too. So if you have that relationship, yeah, it's just, like, game over. Yeah. The longer you go, the easier it gets. You just got to stay persistent with it. But if you don't have those relationships, it's not like you won't get the calls, because I will say, <clears throat> talent and networking are, like, 50-50. So, like... Yeah, for yeah, like, don't feel like if you're like, oh, I have no friends, like I'm screwed, I'm not gonna make it. That's not the case. Like, if I didn't have any friends, like I met you through Chris Copier working for free with you and John, just to show you guys that I like knew anything about film. But like, I didn't know anyone. It was like weird. You and John were definitely very close, and I was just kind of like, for probably about a year and a half, there was like, you know, it was just kind of like. Okay, like I know these guys, like you know, it was weird. I was just like that young guy coming in until like and you're very quiet and I'm very quiet, but until we both like broke through our shells and we're like, We have so much in common, like we're like really <laughs> you know, and then you build that. Like it just happens through time too. So don't don't beat yourself up if you don't have that established yet. Yeah. I mean I'm like old. And it's still something that I'm working on, you know? Yeah. And it's just like one of those things that it's constantly something you have, you know, it's, if it's not your thing, you know, you Mm -hmm. always got to be trying to progress and do better. There's always those like hams on set that like are friends with everyone and they're the attention grabbers. And that's totally cool. Like don't, (laughs) don't feel like you have to be (laughs) that person. And I will say a little, I mean, a little advice would probably be like, don't be that person starting off too. Because you don't want to come... Some people may take that the wrong way. So A lot like, of people take that the wrong way. you got to yeah. be good at your job first. Yeah, be good at your I'm job. Because I'm that person. I'm too talkative on set. And I so early on in my career, that was way more of an issue than it is like nowadays versus... You know what I mean? It's way easier to maintain my good set life and be talkative. But early on in my career, it was hard to like maintain that. 
So what, what happened? Bring them around, talking to someone's ears off. Yeah, I'll just well like just Give talk. Give us an example. Like what? I'm happened? trying to think. I can't think of any situations. I just know that I'm like a talker, and like being around certain first and second ACs when I was utilitying really early on that are a lot more strict. Like they'll just straight tell you. Like, I mean Curtis Burr, I love him to death, but he's taught me so many lessons because he doesn't care. He'll just straight tell you. Like if you're yeah. doing something wrong, you're gonna hear about it in two seconds from Curtis. So like guys like him taught me a lot. So like I can't think of anything like there's nothing really that crazy, but like I know I'd been I've been told off several times throughout my early career of like just not being focused enough and talking too much. And like I think it's networking because it is to a point, but like there has to be a line somewhere as well. For sure. Yeah. I think I think that you just have to find that balance. Like uh, you and I were actually talking about this the other day. Like when Charles and I are not on set, like we're totally joking around, giving each other shit. But like if Charles hires me on a job. I'm right there, yes sir. Like, what does he need? I'm attentive. Like, did I not tell you that about Charles too? When I when we were first, when Charles first started coming around, I was like, Charles is there's like we go into like a work mode, and then there's like the play mode. And I was like, you've seen that, but like you'll see a lot more of that when you get with guys like Charles that have been doing this for 20, 30 years. That like you can really see, and it's not like a bad thing. It's just like you can Tyler see when they Chonky get into that work mode. is a perfect example. Oh yeah, like, he is. Chunky outside of like the set life, he is the funniest. Like, go get him, like, let's go, you know, chug some beers and have fun kind of guy. But when you're on set, like, dude, I he is, like, to mm -hmm. the freaking point. And um, that's really cool. Like, I really, like, strive to that. I respect him for that. And, like, right off the bat, when he was, like, giving me some direction, I was like, yes, sir. And when I was saying, like, yes, sir to him, he was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and it was, like, this mutual, like, okay, we're on the same page here. Let's get our job done. And then outside of that, let's go to the bar and have a great time. It's tonight. guys like, like that, guys like Charles and Curtis Burr, like I said, that like early on, it can be tough and you can't take it the wrong way. But like, I still remember lessons from two and a half years ago from like my second, third camera job ever when Curtis was like, I was super green. Curtis is teaching me stuff. Like I still have stuff and sticking in my mind from that. Like, yeah. Oh, Charles humbled the shit out of me one time. <laughs> I remember on one of our first movies, uh, like the director and I were talking and I felt like we had a pretty good relationship growing and I was a second AC and I was very green and Charles brought me onto the movie as a DP and the director was wanting to do something and I kind of, I jumped in, which it was not my place to, and I jumped in, I was like, oh, what if we shot it like this? And I think actually like that's how they shot it, but Charles did pull me aside and he goes, look, that's not your place. If you mm -hmm. are going to say something, especially in the middle of set, like talk to me first and like there is a layer of that, and as a second AC, what was, was that on? Uh, I think it was on. Not California, give me your eyes. Um, California King. No, hunting, hunting Ava Bravo. Um, we were shooting something in the snow scene, and Gary was asking. Oh yeah. Something okay, of like how to shoot it, and I like just stepped in and was like, "What if we did it like this?" Yeah, and that's right. I think we right. did, but it was just not my place. How I should have approached it was, "Hey Charles, I have an idea." What do you think about this? And then if you liked it, you would have said, yeah, like talk to Gary about it and like almost given me the passage to do so. Yeah. Which is the appropriate way of doing it. Yeah. Um, so there's a chain of command on set that you have to follow. And so yeah, it comes with respect. And that is bigger. The more closer, the closer you are like friends personally wise with someone that's above you or below you like that respect and chain of command really has to stay in place on set. Like, yeah. A lot of it is for, um, like organization yes and it's too. workflow and honestly in that situation it was more of like an organizational thing so that way um the director wasn't being distracted by everybody else trying to like mm -hmm. give him stuff 100 percent. how many it's... times have we sorry to interrupt yeah. how many times have we all been on a call it a green set with i mean this happens all the time on low budget music videos or like product shoots where You'll be trying to shoot what you're needing to do, m mainly like one man band, and you'll have three or four of their friends like, do it this way, no, do this, no, do this. Yeah. And then like that person's chiming in. Before you know it, you're just sitting there with the camera like, can everyone be quiet so I can tell them what I need? Right. And when you're on a set of like 100 <clears throat> people, that could be tenfold. If every crew member thinks they're a director and is trying to give ideas, the director can't think and process that. And that does take some time for me to realize too because at that point i was like why don't why doesn't he just do it like this like what is he thinking and like dude as a director like whew, you have so much going through <laughs> your mind and so much in the day that like maybe he just needed 10 freaking seconds to like think about the shot well, <laughs> dude i have so many funny stories about this like we'll have to bring in 
a director and like have a conversation about this exact same thing because i have so many like funny stories of like big actors taking control of the set mm. because of because of this whole thing like, and it's then, really funny and, and then like, the director's like that's not the goal we're trying to accomplish here yeah. i just need to think not yeah. i would you can't never name names but i've seen that before <laughs> on like 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 large budget but like short like shorter type films but with yeah. the one i was down down south on it was that same thing but it's i see that a lot when or i've heard of that happening when actors have like money and royalties oh, yeah. into it and so oh, yeah. you start getting to that and then well, as a crew member a you're sitting on at that point too yeah. so they do have a say so which then they it's do like, and you're sitting yeah. on set and like as a crew member half the time it's almost just like grabbing my popcorn and sitting on my little ac chair and waiting for and just watching the show happen because right. yeah they i especially <laughs> on like some of those hard shows where you're out in bfe shooting crap for 12 hours in the hot sun like what tempers do? flare yeah so there's been something i ugh, i can't imagine doing that for 20 30 years yeah <laughs> we'll have to do another episode on that um but evan your you your history is, is how you got into the film industry is a little bit different mm -hmm. but how has networking either helped or hindered you um your career i don't want to say network is ever hindered i don't think network i think like the fact that if you're if your networking is hindering your career, you're doing something wrong because networking should just be doing nothing <laughs> but helping you, right? Like, well, you can always network with the wrong people, and then that's that's true. That's pigeon fair. You, pigeonhole you into that's, something. That's fair. Or, See, I took the mind. That's a good topic. I, I took yeah. the attitude of just networking as much as I can, twenty four seven, possibly. Like I said, I didn't go to film school. I have some extended family in film, so like I got on some PA jobs, but like I got my first camera job from Craigslist. And it was actually a director's assistant job, like I've talked about before. And then they gave me the second AC, which they shouldn't have, but it worked out. But yeah, networking, so I've yeah. never stopped networking. Like I, and like I said, the longer you've been in the industry, I think the easier it gets because now, like when you do get a new network connection, you've got like three different people right. that are usually referencing you. A lot of the time, if you've been in it for, I mean, two, three years or 30 years, you've got like gaffers and key grips that are, it's not just like friends recommending you. You've got like real reputable people doing that and so i say that that's all i've really done other because i've worked a couple camera jobs really early with some of my family but my first two three camera jobs were all just networking and meeting people like from that director's assistant job to second ac i became friends with two of the canadian producers and one of the guys that was living in la that was another producer and actor on it actor and producer that was a show that there was just a lot of drama on and he ended up moving to utah so i made friends with them and then the kevin is his name he came to utah then he took me down to arizona twice to go work down there with um a production company he knew and so i mean i've just every single set i've done is pretty much like from especially my first like year or two just kind of kept leading to the next one and to the next one and then yeah. i got enough experience and grant and ethan sort of bringing me on sets here and then again just literally i mean on real housewives the real housewives of the north pole was my first movie uh in camp first movie job in camera in utah and from there i met jeremy Prusso and graham robbins and now year and a half two years later have done two three full movies with graham and dave played on another two and then i mean i met you a lot like i said it's literally like never stop networking always trying yeah. to keep going and i like it because like i said the longer you're in it the easier it gets like, and i think it's like a million times easier nowadays like and i'm sure you can like touch on this well social media definitely to has back to then, play yeah, you, oh, now yeah. we have social media yeah. and stuff so there's zero excuses to do this like, yeah it's crazy how many people reach out to me from all over the world and want to like learn about steadicam or whatever movies mm -hmm. we're talking about kind of things like it's it's crazy you know it's at least one or two people a week from around the world like mm -hmm. hit me up and like want to me to like bring them to america or whatever it is you know what i mean that's amazing yeah you actually made me think of something evan when you're telling your story and that was when i was first starting out after i did the pilot with you guys um we were waiting for about a year for that movie to get funded um after we finished the pilot at yeah. Kirk's house yep and during that year i don't think i stepped on like a real set through that or actually i may have done a little on high school musical but um then the following year, that movie got funded, and I worked on that movie with you guys, and that was like my first real movie. And then I think a full year passed until they got funding for another movie. And in that full year, I didn't step on an actual set again. And I was thinking to myself, I think in that year, I was just doing a bunch of my own like little music videos. Yeah. And I was like, dang, it'd be so cool to get back onto a movie set again. And then I really like thought to myself, as soon as you guys called me again for that second movie... Um, and there probably were a few little jobs here and there from like Cope or whatnot or Brent, but um, 
I had this like realization. I was like, look, if I'm just that kid who's hanging around like Charles all day and just like hanging around the camera all day, I'm never going to meet anyone else on set and never get my name out there. And I remember having that realization through Give Me Your Eyes. I was like, I'm going to make it a point to have a personal connection with every person, every hair and makeup, like every PA to anyone. Um, that way that like if they're having other conversations somewhere else and my name gets brought up, like I just need to start networking. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I remember it was like <clears throat> that movie next month, another movie, another movie. And then it was like that two year span. It was like, I think I did like, I don't know, 25 movies within that two years. It was just ridiculous. And so that was my thing. It was like, Hey, every set I'm on, I'm going to go shake everybody's hand. And um, something my dad taught me that I think is really important that a lot of people don't do nowadays in business is that the end of every single job I get, I go up to the person who hired me, the director, anyone who's, you know, in charge, and I shake their hand, I look them in the eye, and I say thank you for that opportunity. And that has helped me so far. Like, you guys don't realize how many people have called me specifically from that and been like you know like they remember that that stuff goes really far it's yeah. important man you know, like it, like when we did the nba job um i'm sure this doesn't happen on every set but there was a makeup designer that they had hired and they just kind of stuffed her all by herself Karen, in this yeah. little dark closet you know or like hallway in the back she didn't do a single bit of makeup that whole day mm -hmm. and just like when on my free time I'd go and talk to her and I'd be like oh do you enjoy doing this stuff and like you could see her attitude be from like really feeling down on her day to just being happy just by like interacting with someone and that conversation with people I feel like you never know different situations obviously based on your job and who you hire but there's a lot of people that I feel like don't get any attention in the film world they're there to do one thing put the makeup on and get the hell out of the way or do this, put the mic on and get out of the way or do something and just F, F -O, up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So taking that extra 10 minutes just to like, hi, my name is this. Like, what do you do? Like, let me like, I think that you. goes back to yeah. what we've always said is like to a PA second AC to a director, everybody's on the same field. We're all people. We're all important. Charles is amazing at this, <clears throat> especially when you have huge actors a lot of people get starstruck, but at the end of the day, they're just people. <laughs> and like, if you break that barrier and just like communicate, like it's not, oh, you know, they're so and so. It's like, hey, what's up, man? Like, hey, can you step in? And like, just breaking that, you'll realize like these actors will treat you like normal people, and then it's like a normal relationship. Yeah, yeah Stu, on Gonzo. Remember when Sean Penn came in on Gonzo? Because I think they've released all the actors. We can talk about that. But like, remember when Sean Penn came on Gonzo Gore for like two or three days? Oh yeah, it was, he was there for the first full day, and he wasn't acting, and he had his dog there, and he was just there to like. Do you know what happened with me in that situation? No, all I know is I talked to him. I didn't all day. know who he was. Yeah, same. I hadn't seen a picture of. I hadn't yeah. seen a picture of him in years. You guys I, didn't know who Sean Penn no. was. No, dude, I so, he sat at Video Village the whole first yeah, day. He's and, hanging out by us. Oh my god! I like had five conversations with this dude, and like literally end of the day, they were like, "Oh, Sean Penn's dog's so cute," and I was like. Bro, I'm smoking my vape pen. <laughs> Sean Penn's dog? What are you talking about? I'm smoking oh my, my vape pen, and he's like, is that tobacco or weed? And I'm like, it's just tobacco. And he's like, oh, dang it. And just like super fun and just like <laughs> hanging out. And I'm like, I thought it was like a like, producer. Yeah, Sam. I just thought he was like an EP that was hanging out. He had his dog dead. He had his dog dead. Yeah. I thought it was like the owner of the house or Yeah, something. he's like letting us play with his dog, hanging out, throwing toys in his ball. It was just so wild. And then three days in, someone was like, that's Sean Payne. And I'm like. I think it was Ooh. Michaela, one of sure. our PAs that we became friends with, like told us she was like, "Yeah, it's Sean Penn's dog," and we're like, "Where's Sean Penn then? If his dog is here, oh, it's like right funny. there." We're like Which, that's him. I think that's great because like if you can break those barriers, like he talk, he treat, he came and ate lunch with us. Like yeah. it was normal as shit. He like, hung out with the crew. I mean, yeah. he wasn't yeah. like I, in a tent. He was with he was at Video Village with me and all the producers. But then it and made going sense as soon forth. as someone said that because I was always wondering because it was always like an invisible field like 30 feet around him and mm -hmm. then i feel like everyone and i would just like walk by yeah and same like, What's I, yeah. Up, dude? And I just, like, yeah and i was so confused check him and i think i like by. moved. Yeah. <laughs> he like had his water or coffee on our car one morning and i like moved it to the cup holder just like didn't even i was like hey yeah. sorry i'm just gonna throw this right here so i'm getting batteries like not even thinking yeah, I'm like twice. no liquids on the cart dude and like calling <laughs> him out and shit he was and, the nicest guy he yeah, was super nice. so all of, all of my experiences is is if you treat 
and any of those bigger actors, mm -hmm. if you treat them like normal people, then they'll they're like homies they're you know? not you gotta realize they're not out walking the street they're at work just yeah, like we are they, they don't want to be starstruck yeah. they're not trying to sign be... 50 autographs in a yeah, day they get that yeah. every day they don't want people coming up to them fangirling them on set when they're gonna walk out and get fangirled the right they walk out the door they'd rather have a conversation and, with you at like a cooler getting and, a drink and to or that something. point though yeah. i will say like uh like travis bennett he was one of our actors for california king yeah. huge fan of his from the show dave and like right off the bat totally like homied him he like needed a phone charger, just like kept it super, just like chill. And then um, I could tell one of the days a few of like the PAs or somebody wanted like some photos, and uh, you could tell he's kind of annoyed because we're at work and he's trying to focus on his lines and we're doing shit and he's like trying to remember his marks and what he has to do and like people are coming up like can I get a quick photo? <laughs> and then I remember we wrapped one day. Super chill. I think somebody brought some beers. It was a Friday and everyone was just kind of hanging out by like the vans. I was taking everyone back to hotels or whatnot. And I just walked up to him and I just had a great conversation <clears throat> with him. And I was like, yo, do you mind if I get a quick photo? And then we took a photo and it was super dark outside. So then rap party, he comes up to me and I was like, I brought Miranda and everything. And he comes up and he's like giving her shit for dating me. And it was like, you picked him and like, was messing around and he's like let's grab a photo uh that last one was super dark like i know it looked like shit like there's better lighting here and he remembered that moment and then asked me for a better photo to like so it just goes you know if you just wait respect them like it goes tenfold yeah so earlier you said something about making a personal connection yeah. with people what does making that personal connection look like for you I mean, dude, as silly as it sounds, it's going up to them and, like, asking them where they're from, where they're at. Like, do they have family? Like, is there, like, a lot of, you know, people have kids and wives at home. And um, who's the actor who's in our Christmas movie? He does all of American Pie. Um, which, which well, we've done 22 Christmas movies. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <That's all. laughs> we do a lot of those. That's what I'm saying. Too many names to remember. Is it a Netflix or a Hallmark? Okay, jump in, jump in to another actor yeah. like William Defoe. Yeah. Uh, when we were doing Gonzo Girl, I was having a conversation out with him and uh, we wanted to get some chickens. We have some chickens now. Yeah. And uh, it was hilarious because he was like, um, he was like, yeah, we have a bunch of chickens at our house. And he's like, give me all this advice at chickens. And then he's like FaceTiming whoever was at his house he's like check out my chickens like in the middle of the set <laughs> and it went from like holy crap that's like the guy from spider-man to like just a homie who was telling me about his chickens and like the know, longer that movie cool. went on yeah. the more cool and the more like just relaxed that he got yeah it's just great like, for me it's breaking down the barriers and like talking about some real shit like people mm -hmm. are going through some real shit like you got to get there working they're not in like fantasy land either like yes you could like argue whose job's harder but like it's not of whose job's hard. like they're there working mm -hmm. just like you are like they're not having like they're not there to enjoy their entire time like everyone's there doing the same thing yeah we're i mean yeah it, it's really cool when you can um I just have a brain dead. Who's the actor from Four Christmases and Dodgeball? And, um, oh, Vince Vaughn when Vince we did Vaughn. the Justin yeah. Long movie. So, like, example, and, like, Vince Vaughn is probably one of the coolest actors I've met, hands down. Like, me and him, like, we see eye to eye. Definitely, like, things he was saying. To put in perspective, like, that movie was cool because he didn't act in that movie. We just did that with him, and he was, like, the he was main a, he was exec a yeah, executive Yeah, he's the main producer. executive producer. So he was basically just, like, on set every day all day, but, like, hanging out and, like, with us behind monitors. Like, line writing. And um, for people who don't know, my dad recently passed away, and he was going through cancer. And that day during set, like, that was during the main of my dad's chemo, and I was working that movie. And there was one day where I just, I couldn't take it. Like, I was just, like, down in my shit, and I, he could tell. And he came up to me, and because we've had, you know, a few conversations before, he came around, like, threw his arm around me. He's like, hey, are you good? And I, I just, like, I was like, no, I'm not. Like, this is going on. My dad's in the hospital, this, that, and the other. And right away, he goes, hey, you know, I'm going through the same thing. And, like, just opened up to me completely. And, like, we had this really, like, heart-to-heart. -heart, and it, like, took us away from, like, bullshit grinding three weeks in 12 hour days so like look we're on the same shit like let's get this movie done and then we can get back to our family and like it was cool as shit like when you break through that wall I don't know. that's it's like cool. a big that's part awesome. of it is 
there's a lot of people out there these days that are pretending to care about what you do. If you remember somebody's name, or like if they tell you about their kids and you remember their kid's name, and you take the time to actually care about what people are telling you, it, you, it takes you a million miles further than, oh, And it's hard. Blah, blah, blah. It's hard on a film set mm -hmm. to like, to do that. I get because, to be vulnerable. Like, well, it, and not only that, but there's just not like time, right? Yeah. Like when I'm when I'm DPing on a show, like literally everybody's coming up to me. Hey Charles, what about this? Hey Charles, this. Hey Charles, this. 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 You know? And it's just like, dude, I don't have freaking time, you know, to do anything. How do you say like, go put that light over there? But hey, how's your kid doing? Do yeah, have a good exa birthday? no, exactly. And so it's like, and that's where one of the things that I've always tried to do as a DP is sit down during lunchtime with other people and not just like my camera homies but yeah. like sit down with other departments and try to get to know other people there yep. um and then also at the end of the day dude i'm like usually the last person to leave yeah and I'm... instead of just like throwing the camera down and be like peace out bitches um i'm there wrapping cables i'm there like helping camera team put the camera away i'm there talking to the director i'm helping like genie team wrap out like whatever i can do to like help mm -hmm. out and show that i'm just like not piecing I, out that i feel like that know? goes tenfold because i've seen it firsthand of you literally being a dp going and helping out electrics to making sure cameras wrap to shaking executive executive producers hands to like at the end of the day being on the last bus making sure we're all good and like to that your team <clears throat> looks at you and it's like oh we'll go to war like right. he's not leaving us high and dry like if it's in the shit and, um, and that's not just per department. I mean, I've seen Chris Copier when, oh, yeah. he's, when he's first yeah. AD or when he's second AD and not even on set all the time. I've seen him come and juice for three days in a row because they couldn't <laughs> find a juicer and he's yeah. the only one experiencing that. So next thing you know, Chris is doing paperwork at night, but also juicing during the day. Yeah. yeah. Like it goes around the world. It's everyone can do that. Yep. Well, and I think that also builds a level of respect for everybody on set, how they look at you. I think one thing that was, was stood out to me was when we were on that Chris or um, give me your eyes and it was like negative six degrees middle of the night we had like snow up to our hips and Charles had the Trinity out there Charles is carrying this Trinity for like <laughs> ten hours in the snowbank is ridiculous like we had our that was so dumb. winter <laughs> climbing <laughs> gear on it was so dumb uh, lenses were freezing I had a cooler <laughs> with hot hands in there to like heat up lenses it uh, we had hot hands taped onto the motors for focus it was ridiculous but we were out there grinding and charles needed a break and i remember like we threw the trinity on my shoulder and like because it wasn't worth trucking through the snow and going all the way back and i sat out there gave charles 30 minute break and i had this thing just hutched as it's snowing sideways on me just sitting there shaking and ben and jay were out there setting lights and they were also out there freaking shaking and like it was colder than shit Jay had this huge freaking sky panel just like trucking through snow. And then he looks over at me. He's like, we're in the shit. <laughs> he just like keeps trucking. And then like ever since then, like, and I'm over here like smiling with it. And I remember Jay said something on set. Like someone was talking shit about me and um, forgot like who it was, but it was saying I was green or something. And Jay, like, looked up. Do you remember this? Jay looked over at him, and he goes, shut the fuck up. He goes, that's Scooter. I've seen that kid. It's four in the <laughs> yeah, morning. Man. Have a Trinity over his back, freezing his ass off while everyone was sitting around heaters. And just, like, shut the kid up. <laughs> and, like, coming from Jay, who's, like, an OG dog, like, one of the best lighting people probably, like, around. Yeah, he's... Um, it's really special He's and that's great. cool and just no like yeah i mean as far as network uh, but jay never said a word to me before that yeah and then as soon as that night happened do you remember after that the whole movie i was like his little buddy homies yeah and like i earned his <laughs> i earned his respect and so like maybe maybe you're not the person that's jumping up saying like hey i'm so and so and i do this but like if you work hard those relationships yeah that goes back to the most connection yeah. you have to work you have to be good at your job before anything else like yeah you can be good at networking but you got to be good at your job that's what makes because you still have the guys that you won't necessarily talk to all the time but will back you up and you don't even know who's they might throw your name in the hat somewhere you don't know what job and guys like jay who's similar to you have been doing it for so many fucking years like you never know jay's been on does high school musical disney union shows all the time you never know where your name might get tossed right. around like 
No, so and, true. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's small Lake City, and, and I mean the film industry is small. I mean, we go out to L.A. all the time. We go all around the world. L.A. people come here, so like, yes, networking, reputation, it's very important. There's some. Yeah. There's some politics, as much as you don't want to say it. There are some politics. It's. I'd say it's half politics. There's a lot of politics you have to just manage. Like, it's not a bad thing. It's just that's part of the industry. Yeah. And it's part of being an independent contractor in general. Is like. Yeah. Well, thanks, Charles, for taking me under your wing a long time ago and not just kicking oh, me yeah. to the curb. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, I got to go potty, and I feel like we've <laughs> I feel like we hammered in networking. What are we at, Tyson? We hammered uh, 45. In. Hopefully, you all learned something. If you don't know how to network after this podcast, then I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to know. Just talk. be good at your job and talk to people. And If you didn't get that, exchange by the end of this podcast, information. It's, it's make sorry. the personal connection. Yeah, that's, ex- that's what I got. And out maintain of this. it. Yeah. Like I said, unnamed. I forgot to do my text messages. Someone in my family did, and then they got a job, like one of the <laughs> only like jobs. Evan's jealous. <laughs> I asked Jelly my, boy. Like, How did you get it? And he was like, I texted her after the holidays, and I was like, Evan didn't get the job. Yeah. I was I like, are you her first pick? And he was I like, am. no, I just texted her. I was probably the last person to text her. I was like... So if you don't want to end up like Evan, make sure you follow <laughs> the advice that we gave you in this podcast. Thanks, guys, for watching. Seriously, your support means the world. If you're not, subscribe. Turn on the notifications. It may not seem like a lot, but when we post a new video, it will send you a notification, and those views helps the algorithm, all that blah, 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 blah. Help us out there. Much love. See ya.